my home I can just passing through Earthly treasures soon will fade But I found my hope in you You are the one I want You are the one I need This world can have it all Everybody, welcome to worship. I'm James Nelson, and I'm super excited to welcome you to this moment of worship here at Destiny Christian Church. I am excited about what God has planned for your life, and I believe that something good is in store for you today. Now listen, I know there's a lot that has happened this past week. I know there's been a lot that's been going on, 
But in the midst of all the adversity, troubles, challenges, even successes, that God is still faithful, that God is still good. A lot of times we just point out all the negative and we fail to point out the good things that God has done. But I want to just say in the midst of everything, good, bad, and the ugly, God is good. And I'm glad that you stopped to watch us today because the Lord has something to say and speak into your life. I want you to pause for just a moment and I want to invoke the presence of the Lord right now. I want to pray for you that are watching with me even in this moment and even as you put up prayer requests and as you're coming and tagging and liking and commenting and sharing, I, I want to pause and pray for you today because I don't want you to miss what God has in store for your life. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for it's in you we live and move and have our being. I thank you because you have blessed us, you have helped us, you've covered us, you've kept us, you've challenged us, you've lifted us, you've done some great things in our lives. Wherever we are glad. Thank you, Father, because you brought us to another week. And here we are on another Sunday, starting our week, but we want to start it with you. We don't want to do anything without you. So we confess that in you we live, move, and breathe, and have our being. So in this moment, Holy Spirit, we invite you to come in. We confess that as humans that we have sinned, we've come short of your glory. We recognize that there are things that we have done that may have, Lord, counted us and put us in a place where it can bring a breach between the flow, our relationship, our connection. So today, Father, we confess our faults, our sins, our presumptuous sins. We ask that you would forgive us today. We don't want nothing between you and us. I ask that you apply the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. And I thank you that curses are broken. I thank you that yokes are destroyed because of the blood of Jesus. Now, Father, we invite you into this moment. Permeate that room. Permeate that house. Permeate that, that workplace. Permeate that car. If they're sitting in the park, wherever they are, Father, I'm asking that you would let your glory rest in that place right now. We come against every power of darkness. We pray for every parent. We pray for every CEO. We pray for every politician. We pray for every person that's, that's grieving, that's sick. We pray for every person that's challenged. We cover relationships. We speak, Father, even to other countries. We speak that your power would fall. We speak that you would move, give answers, give deliverance, give breakthrough, give direction. We speak that salvation would come to those that need to be saved. We speak that every need will be met. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for breakthrough. And we thank you for change. And we thank you, Father, that you're getting ready to make some things happen. And we're excited about what it is that you're doing. Bless this worship experience. Let it be like none other. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And we say amen. Will you come on, celebrate, clap those hands. Let's believe the Lord because God's got something great that he's getting ready to do in your life. Let's get ready. Stay tuned. Rock with us. We're getting ready to go into worship. Let's get ready. Now, if you know that God has been better than good to you, I need you to put that in the comments. Lord, you've been better than good to me, yeah. I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praises should continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. That's all the song says. Can you catch that and sing it with us? Come on, lift it up. Everybody say, I will bless the Lord. And it's praises. No matter what I see. Tell the Lord, Lord, as long as I'm breathing. Whoa. That's what scripture says, y'all. Let us exalt his name. We're going to do it. Let's lay down our And we're going to lift up his name. Let's do it together. Let's do it. Let's do it together. Hey, I 
I think you got it. Can we go back to the top? I think you got it right now. I need you to lift it up higher than you did it before. Come on. Say, I will bless the Lord. And his praises. No matter what I see. No matter what the circumstance may be. I will. Whoa. We're going to do it. Let's lay down our crowns as we exalt the King of Kings. We're going to do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Oh, oh magnify the Lord with me. You got it. Lift it up right where you are. As we exalt His name, we're going to do it together. If he's been good to me, I know he's been good to you. Let's do it. Let's do it hey, hey, hey. And this is why I uh, tell my testimony. He's been, been better than good to me. If you know that's true for you, say it. Lord, you've been better. You've been better than good. Can we tell it all, y'all? We say, I should have been dead. Poor Lord, you stepped in and you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. Should have lost my mind. I read it on time ago, but if that's true for you, can you say it like you mean it? Hey, yeah, I should have been dying. Hey, Sustain me, Lord, you kept me, and not only that, I should have lost my mind. Lost my mind. Oh, then it all turned on. Yeah. So we say, Lord, you've been better than good. You kept me all this time. You've been a sustainer. You've been a redeemer. You to take a praise ring right here. Why? Cause what God did it. Hey, but God did it. And here's where I would be without him. Hey, I should have been dead. Yeah. Lord, where would I be without your spirit and your love for me? I should have lost my Show your mercy. You've been there. 
Glory to your name, you've been better. If it was up to me, I would have been dead. Sleeping in my grave. But you stepped in right on time. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. Somebody think about yesterday. Somebody think about last week. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is said for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I cannot be silent. I cannot be quiet. You've been too good to me. You've been too kind to me. You've been patient. Hey, hey, hey. You've been loving. I've been disobedient. I've been in my flesh, but you've been better. Pray your mercies, I receive daily. You've been better. Somebody think about yourself. Flaws and all, he's still been better. Because it should have been me. I'll die with no food and no clothes. I should have been all should be just another number somebody think about yourself I should be just another number with a tragedy Lord but you didn't save it somebody think about your testimony God you didn't see fit to let none of those things the things that I got myself into you didn't see fit to let none of these things be and every day you keep on, you keep on, you keep on, you keep on, you keep on keeping me. So the least that I can do is say thank you, Lord. The least that we could do, destiny, wherever you're watching from. I don't know where you are and I don't know who you are. But the least that we can do is say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. All I can give you, Lord, is my thank you. You've kept me all pandemic long. I just want to say thank you. I should be out of my mind by now. But I just came to say thank you. Is anybody going to be like the one leopard that came back? Lord, I want you to know how I feel. And I feel like gratitude. So I say thank you, Lord. For all. all over I need right where you are you to lift your hands I need you to take this moment and just worship the Lord come on it could have been you outdoors no food no clothes it could have been you in the place of hardship and challenge but the Lord has been good to you and so I want you to take this moment I want you to lift your voice and I just want you to worship God right there come on give God the praise that is due to his name Thank you, Lord. I was taught when somebody does something good to you and for you, that it's just nice to say thank you. Listen, you may not have a whole lot of fancy words, but you don't have to try to think hard just to be appreciative. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything is not perfect, but thank you, Lord. I got my right mind. I got the activities of my limbs. Thank you, Lord. I, I thank you because it could have been worse. Thank you for saving me from danger seen and danger unseen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for just blessing me. Father, and it's not even about comparing myself to anybody else. I just want to say thank you because you've been so good to me. Lord, I just want to thank you today. Glory to God. This is a good day to give thanks. Glory to God unto the Lord. It's a good day to give thanks unto the Lord. And for this, we give God praise. For this, we give God praise. Listen, I want to welcome you again to this moment of worship. Can't you feel the presence of the Lord? Thank you to our music ministry for setting the stage for what God is doing. I'm telling you, the Lord is in this place. And I am so glad that you have joined us today 
to feel the presence of the Lord. And I'm excited about what God's getting ready to do. Listen, while you're worshiping God with your lips, here's a perfect moment to worship God with your substance. God has been good to us. He's blessed us. He's helped us. He's covered us. He's fed us. He's provided for us. We couldn't be in any more well taken care of because God has been so good. So I want to give you this moment to sow into this moment. Sow into this moment. Did you not know that giving is worship? Did you not know that even though it is monetarily you giving, sowing, planting seed, maybe you did not know that giving is worship. David taught us this. He he said, I've been blessed and it's of thine own because you've given to me. Now I give back to you. I worship you with my substance. Did you not know if you studied the scripture that when they would go to the temple to worship, nobody came empty handed? Even the widow that only had one might, she still brought something to say thank you to the Lord, to worship God in giving. Hallelujah to God. Father, as we thank you today because you've been good to us, we can still sense your presence. We, we, we've invited you into this moment. We've come before your presence. We're singing. Now we have this moment to sow seed. So today, Father, without being coerced, without having our arms twisted, without being made false promises, we just want to sow so we can tell you thank you. Hallelujah. We just want to sow so we can tell you thank you. So in this moment, We say thank you with our substance. So, Father, whether it's that one, like that widow who gave all her might, or whether it's the 5,000 or 10,000 or 500 or $20, whatever it is, it's a thanksgiving seed. And so we sow it now. Glory to God. We sow it now. In this moment, I want you to take this opportunity to sow in this moment. I want you to sow. Information is up on the screen. Text to give. Give the five. Cash app. You can, whatever means that you do, I want you to give a God a Thanksgiving seed. If this is your time to tithe, I want you to do so as well. Glory to God. His presence is with us. And we give him glory. And we give him praise. And we honor and bless his name. For the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. So I, 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 I want you to sow. I want you to sow. I want you to sow a Thanksgiving seed. Plant that seed. A Thanksgiving seed. Father, I'm giving this seed because I'm grateful. I'm giving this seed because I thank you and I honor you. Listen, they'll, they'll keep it up or put it up while I'm ministering, but I want to I go right into the word of the Lord on today. I want you to grab your Bibles. I want you to grab your Bibles. Thank you to everyone that helps to make this possible. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I, 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 I want you to stay tuned. I promise I'm not going to keep you long today. In the book of Acts, chapter number 8. The book of Acts, chapter number 8, and verse 1, and then we're going to read through verse 4. We've been talking about destiny. It's an overarching theme. And today, in that context, we're still talking about destiny. I, I want to share this word with you today. Acts, chapter 8, verse 1. Father, if you would just speak to us. We, we just want to say thank you for talking to us. You've been so faithful to do it before. And I ask, Lord, that you would just do it again. Give us ears and minds that are ready to hear and receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at what it says. It says, and Saul, listen to this, approved of his execution. There arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And there were all, they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made a great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Last verse here. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Just for a few moments, I want to talk from this topic, when you stay too long. When you stay too long. 
I, I, I want to I wanna challenge us because we're talking about destiny and we understand when we talk about destiny, it has to do with an end, an intention. When we talk about destiny in, in the relationship with Christians, we have to tie it back to the heart and the mind of God. I've quoted the scripture before, and we've even read from the scripture and preached from the scripture before, but, but the Lord wants to just share something quickly with us today out of this text, because I've been saying it for weeks that we all have destiny. There is something that God has for us, and when we deal with it in the context of God, you cannot talk about destiny without talking about God's intention, his mind. Jeremiah 29, 11, you know it. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you what? an expected end, to give you expectation. Secondarily, he tells us that we are supposed to keep moving, progress, to keep going forward. The Bible says that we'll know as we follow on to know, keep moving. The Bible tells us that we ought to press toward the mark of the prize, keep moving. The Bible says we go from faith to faith, keep moving, strength to strength, glory to glory. It's all about forward movement. It's all about reaching a place. It's all about accomplishing a goal. When Paul is ready to die, he, he says that, that he finished his, his work, that he accomplished, that, that now there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness because he accomplished an intention. When, when Jesus is hanging on the cross, the Bible says he opens up his mouth and says, it is finished. It is accomplished. I have succeeded. What have you succeeded in? I reached my goal. I did what God intended for me to do. With that being said, then, then the challenge is if we're supposed to keep moving, keep progressing, if, if destiny deals with where we're going, that, that means in destiny, that includes movement. So, so you can't be a person of destiny and be stagnant and still. Let me say that one more time. You cannot be a person of destiny and be stagnant and still. We are creatures of habit. We are creatures of comfort. We like when something works, we like to stick with it. And we like to do things that make us comfortable. When we find something that works, we like to stick with it, and we like to do things that are comfortable. Here's, here's, here's something that you have to pay attention to. The greatest enemy of future happenings is success. What, what do you mean? Current success threatens future success. Let, let me explain that to you. Let me, let me put that in context for you. Current success threatens future success because whenever anyone has success at whatever level, what they tend to do is to repeat whatever they did in order to continue to have the same success. The challenge is, the challenge is with God, God is so broad and God is so big that even though God gives you success here, God also wants to give you success here. But the problem is when I have success here, then my habit, because I'm a creature of habit, my thought process is I've got to keep doing that so I can keep having success. But the problem is with God, success is progressive. So you may have had success here today, but success over here may look a little bit different. It may be a little bit broader in this context. Pa Pastor, why are you stressing this with us? Because the success of this previous place threatens the success of the next place because when it works here, I'm not apt to do anything different. I'm not apt to expand. I'm not apt to try anything else because it has been working right here. Lord have mercy. Whether you believe it or not, the power of the Holy Ghost falling at Pentecost created the same scenario. <laughs> Who would have thought that the Holy Ghost falling would have been problematic. Now, I know we celebrate Pentecost. I know we thank God for the Holy Ghost. I preach it. I believe it. I know you need to have it. But can you imagine that 
Pentecost became a crutch for those that were in charge, the leadership. Can, can you imagine that the Holy Ghost, the success of it, people being saved, became an issue for those that were affected by it? See, so here's what you got to understand. What most people don't realize is that the gospel of Jesus Christ was never meant to be limited to one place. It was never meant to be limited to one place. Maybe you don't understand this, but, but the power of the Holy Ghost, it came, but it came not to be stagnant and stuck, but it came to expand. I think, I think that there is something that we have to remember. The Bible says in Acts chapter number one, it says, after that the Holy Ghost is come, that ye shall receive power. But the power is to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and then he says, in the uttermost part of the world. Why is that relevant today? I want y'all to go with me on a quick journey. We're in Acts. I've talked about Acts before. We know it is the Acts of the Apostles, the beginning of the church. But I need you to also understand not only is it the Acts of the Apostles, the beginning of the church, but it is also the Acts of the Holy Spirit. We, we, what we see in the book of Acts is we see the movement and we see the progression of Holy Spirit in, in this. We see the movement, we see the progression of Holy Spirit. We see how the church began to expand. We, we see how things begin to progress. We see how God took it from one nucleus and expanded it until it became a global impact. I want to talk to somebody today because I need you to hear me. The assignment on your life is bigger than what you think. That's, that's the first thing that I want to say. If you don't hear nothing else that I say today, I want you to hear this. The assignment on your life is bigger than what you think. I, I, I want to prove it to you. The text that we are reading today, it, it comes on the cusp of, of the last two chapters. Chapter number six, the Holy Ghost has moved. The work of God has become so broad and so, so impactful that the apostles are not able to function at the level that they need to function. They, they, they can't do the business and do the ministry. That, that's why we thank God for staff in church. That's why we thank God for volunteers because the apostles could not stop from the preaching and teaching of the word, but there were people that were complaining that needs weren't being met. So, what they did was they prayed, and after prayer, they appointed people full of the Holy Ghost. And here's where we have the first deacons. We, we, have, we have the first deacons in Acts chapter, Lord have mercy, number six. We, we, we have what, what I call the preaching deacons because these were people, the Bible says, they were full of the Holy Ghost. They, they were full of the Holy Ghost. They were godly men. And, and there were people like Philip. I know you probably thought Philip was, we call him the evangelist, but Philip, y'all, was a deacon. You had Stephen, who was a deacon. He was a godly man, full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost. Procurus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenus and, and, and Nicholas, they, they, they were all the first deacons of the church. What's interesting is, after we see the first deacons of the church, the Bible says that these deacons, they started moving, y'all. The Bible says in chapter number six that, Philip, that, that, that Stephen was doing miraculous signs and wonders. I need y'all to understand that I know that we have limited to the pulpit. I know we have limited to the pastor, but I need y'all to understand that the word of God is so true. These signs shall follow them that believe. I want to tell you, God wants to use you to do something miraculous. As a result, they hated 
where Stephen was preaching. There were those that were against the church. And, and the Bible says that, that that Jewish community rose up against the Christian community, and they basically lied on Stephen, brought him up on charges. And after Stephen preached the gospel to them, the Bible said they stoned him. I don't have time to get deep into that, but they stoned Stephen. And, and when they stoned Stephen, chapter number 8 opens up with the agreement, the, the, the condoning of Saul of Stephen's death. So the Bible says that they put their coats at the feet of Saul, and Saul was in agreement with Stephen's death. That's how chapter 8 opens, because it is the introduction of Saul, because it begins the story of his conversion. But the Bible says he was persecuting the churches. He was a devout Jew. And as crazy as it may seem, Paul, who is Saul at this point, is doing what he's doing as a religious means. So based upon what he believed, he was defending his faith. He was, he was defending his belief system, not knowing that one chapter later, there was getting ready to be a conversion. But look at what happens now. And, and here, here I am in my message today, because I told you I, I don't have a long, drawn-out message today. Here I am in my message today. God now had a plan for the church that was bigger than what the church realized. And, and I, and, and I want to talk to you because if God's plan is bigger than what we realize, then what happens when I get into a place of routine and comfortable and habit where I am. I, I want to talk to somebody because you are in a place, you don't realize God has something more for you, and you've gotten comfortable right where you are. You're, you're cool with the success that you've seen. You're happy with, with the advancements that you've made. You're, you're glad about what it is that you have experienced, and you don't even realize God has something more. Here it is, y'all. They're, they're excited. Can't you feel it? The excitement of the church. 3,000 people got saved, then 5,000, and, and church is blowing up. Christianity is happening. People are getting delivered. They, they, they got disciples that, that are following them. They made deacons, and the deacons are preaching. They're doing signs and wonders and miracles, and they're going into territories and regions, and things are happening. But the problem is... They're doing all of this in a small, confined space. And the challenge is God is ready to expand. What do you do when God is ready to expand, but you are comfortable right where you are? This is the predicament that we're in. And I have three quick points that I believe are going to help you very quickly. Number one, I, I, I want to talk about divine disruption. Lord have mercy. I want to talk about divine disruption. Whenever you stay too long in something, in a place, in, in a situation where God wants more. And so you got to understand, y'all, normally we would think loyalty to one place, being comfortable in that place, sticking to what works. Normally we would think that that is cool. And why would God bother what was going on? The problem is... The gospel was to be spread through all the world. Acts chapter number 1 and 8 says, and in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the earth. The problem is they were stuck in Jerusalem. Lord, have mercy. I, I promise I ain't going to be much longer. They were stuck in Jerusalem, y'all. They, they were doing it. They were going from house to house, but it was only in Jerusalem. People were getting saved, but it was only in Jerusalem. And God says, I've got a global, Lord have mercy, message. I've got something bigger. See, here it is. You are seeing success, but it's only in your house. It's only relegated to a small area of what you're doing. And God has said, I got something else for you. Look at what God did through COVID. Lord have mercy. Divine disruption. God took the ministry from just being in the local four walls of the church and forced it on into the world. Lord have mercy. 
through a divine disruption. Hey, glory to God. I want to say to you, whenever God disrupts something, it's not that he's mad. It's that he's trying to get something greater out of your situation. I don't have time, but I would walk you through Scripture, and I would show you whenever there was a disruption, it was because something else was getting ready to happen. Something greater was getting ready to take place. Whenever there was disruption, it was because God was about to introduce something greater. The wine ceases in John chapter number two, divine interruption, so that they can have even better wine and the ministry of Jesus could be birthed. Whenever there is disruption, it is because something else is about to be introduced. Number two, number two, you gotta, you gotta get this now. What is the divine disruption? The divine disruption is persecution. <sighs> They, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. The, the, y'all, y'all, if we're going to be saved, persecution is going to come with it. When, when we talk about persecution in Scripture, we, we, we got we to talk about this. What is, what is persecution? persecution? Persecution is harassment, hostility, ill treatment. And, and sometimes it is based, listen to this, on bias, whether it's ethnicity or religion or, or sexual orientation, it, it is ill treatment, hostility, Lord have mercy. It, it is based on sometimes who you are, the preference of the person that's doing it. So you got to understand this. Paul is persecuting the church because Paul is an avid Jew. And he's against Christianity because he doesn't understand God is in it yet. Lord have mercy. See, we, we got it easy, y'all. We, we got it easy. Christianity in this inception, I know we shout about it now, talk about the Holy Ghost. I can't explain, but I got it. But, but to have the Holy Ghost back then and to do the stuff back then, it was almost blasphemous. It was almost blasphemous. I, I promise I'm cutting around the corner now. It was almost blasphemous. And so, so Paul begins to persecute the church. He begins to treat them wrong because of their stance, because of what they believed in, because they were Christians. They were persecuted. But here's what Paul did not know. My God. Here's what Paul did not know. The persecution led them to purpose. I, I, I want to tell you for my second point that, that persecution it's about to lead you to purpose. It's, it's getting ready to take you somewhere. It's getting, ready, it's, re- it's getting ready to get you where you need to go. See, that when, when man makes a move and when the enemy makes a move thinking they're doing one thing, what they don't even understand is they are literally setting the stage for you to get into purpose. God always wanted the ministry to go to Judea and Samaria and when they begin to persecute the church, the text said it, y'all, we just read it, when they begin to persecute the church, the text says that they went into the regions, they were scattered into the regions of Judea and Samaria. Good God Almighty. It was always a part of the plan. I just want to tell you today that it was always a part of the plan. See, see, it looks like they scattered us, but what they really did was they pushed us into purpose. I I, I want to talk to you today um, for these last couple of minutes, and I want to tell you, because my third point is is the push. see, 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 I want you to see how it works. It's a divine disruption that comes to mess up the flow of what is. Do you know how tradition gets started? Some tradition is not about we do this every first Sunday, every third Sunday, or or we always get together and do that. Do you not know some tradition is what happened is somebody had success in this and they kept it, they memorialized it, they kept repeating it and it became a tradition. Lord have mercy. Some of you are traditional and don't even realize it because when we think of tradition, we think of it from an old place, an old model. We think of something antiquated, but some of you are traditional because you got stuck in a moment of success. You got frozen in what happened. You lived in it. You relicked in it, and you have not been able to move on. So God says you are staying too long. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send a divine disruption 
that, that's going to persecute you. It's, gonna, and it's, it's, it's after specifically you. That, that's why some of you feel targeted at, at, at work. That's why some of you feel targeted in your family. That's why some of you feel targeted in your community. That's why some of you even feel targeted even in ministry. And you're trying to figure out, why am I being picked on? Because persecution sometimes is biased. Lord have mercy. It is targeted on you because it's pushing you into purpose. It's, 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 it's pushing you. Today, that's what I come. In these last couple moments of this message, I come today to divinely push you, nudge you, push you, nudge you into your next. Hey, glory to God. God's got greater territory for you, but you need a push. So whenever you stay too long, God will disrupt what is. He will let persecution hit you, Lord have mercy, and then he'll push you. Let me say it one more time. I'm done. I promise I'm closing. But whenever you have stayed in a place too long, God will divinely disrupt it. God will let persecution come, and then God will push you. Lord have mercy. See, see, whenever you get pushed, a, a push means I'm moving by force. A push means I'm moving outside of my choice. Push means that I'm moving when, when I don't necessarily want to move, but I don't have no choice because the force that's coming against me is greater than the force that's with me right now. Ah, yeah. Glory to God. So, so God is pushing you. He's pushing you into the business. He's, he's pushing you to, to birth. He's pushing you to write. He's pushing you to do. He's pushing you to become. He's pushing you to overcome. He's pushing you to mature. He's pushing you to be what you need to be. He's pushing you to take responsibility because God says you stayed there way too long. Marcus, you can play something soft. I, I'm done. When, when, when you stay too long, the Bible says he told the children of Israel, you've been around this mountain too long. You, you've been at this place too long. The success hurt you because you've seen it and you try to duplicate it and now you're in a cycle too long. That's why you got the pink slip from the job. That's why they put you on probation. They were pushing you. It's not that God is mad. Everything is not judgment. Everything is not God mad with you. Everything is not you being punished. We got to stop thinking that it's so negative. Sometimes God is just persecuting, pushing you into purpose. They were scattered. And as a result of being scattered, now we got Philip in Samaria, great revival breaks out. Souls get saved. The Ethiopian, I, I don't even have time to work it like I want to work it. The Ethiopian hears the message in Samaria and begins to travel home and begins to read the scripture and one understanding and God moves Philip and disrupts a citywide revival, takes him out into the middle of the desert to sit on a chariot with an Ethiopian to give him the gospel so he could take it back to Sheba and Ethiopia <laughs> so that Africans could be saved. I, I, I'm trying to help you all understand. It's so much bigger than what you think. Had Philip not been disrupted in Jerusalem, he would have never went to Samaria. Had he not been in Samaria, he would have never met the Ethiopian. Had he never met the Ethiopian, he would have never taken the gospel to where the queen of Sheba was. I want to I speak to you today. It's a divine interruption that's persecuting. It's, it's, it's designed to antagonize you because it's pushing you into purpose. Father, I thank you today for your presence and your power and your spirit. I, I thank you, Father, for this moment that you've given us to share this word. Today, Father, help us to realize when we stay too long. But Father, even if we don't realize it, forgive us. And today we celebrate the divine disruption. We thank you for the persecution that has pushed us into our purpose. 
So today, Father, forgive us for missing it in the past. Forgive us for being comfortable in our previous success. And forgive us, Lord, for becoming traditional and not even knowing it. But today, through the power of the Holy Spirit, if you help us, we're going to move. We're going we're gonna to shift. We're going to go to our next. We're going to walk out our destiny. And we're going to accomplish everything you've given us to accomplish in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Listen, it's time for us to even move right now. You need to make a decision. You need to give your life to Christ. You've been where you are too long without Christ. Or maybe you had relationship and, and you walk away. You walked away. You broke it off. Because one thing about God, he says, listen, I'm even married to the backslider. I, I, I don't break it up. I love you with an everlasting love. With loving kindness, he said, I've drawn you. Sometimes it's us. We, we get mad. We, we walk away. We get frustrated. The Lord says, whether you've never had a relationship with me or whether you walked away, I want to invite you to come back. Make a move. You stayed away too long. So I've sent this message even as a divine disruption. You weren't even intended to look at this program today, but, but the Holy Spirit led you to this moment to bring relationship back to God. Listen, there's, there's some information up on the screen. I want you to reach out so that we can let you know about asking Christ into your life. You need to ask him into your life. You need to repent. You need to be baptized and you need to be filled with the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Today, we want to make sure that you get all that information. Hit us up on the screen. You want to be a part of our e-church community. We'll be so excited to allow you to have you, not so much allow you, to have you be a part. This, this, this is the body of Christ, so we're not allowing anything. You want to be a part, we are welcoming you with open arms to come to be a part of the body of Christ. And I'm excited today about those of you that have given your life to Christ. Thank you today. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for taking time to watch us. Listen, maybe you came late and, and you want to sow and you want to be a part. We, we have been giving God a Thanksgiving seed today. I want you right now, they'll put it up on the screen, the information there that you can sow, that you can give, that you can participate. Cash app, give the five. Text to give. It's on all of our platforms. You can sow, you can give. And I'm excited today because you want to get that seed in the ground. You know that God is pushing you. You know that God is interrupted some things that's happened in your life because you got comfortable in your success. Now God has said, I'm pushing you into your next. And I'm telling you, you read the scripture, all the stuff that happened when they went into their next, all the people that got delivered, all the miracles that were done. Glory to God. God has something for you. And I'm excited about your next. Listen, until next time, Thank you for joining us today. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. The peace of God be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and the Lord give you peace in Jesus' name. Peace and blessings, everybody. I'll see you later. Treasure. Come on, anybody feel that way in the house tonight? Hallelujah. You are forever.